Hello everyone, it's Russ of Aquarimax here, and now I'm going to be showing you my Blue Death Feigning Beetle Breeding Project. Uh, you may not uh, be aware that uh, Blue Death Feigning Beetles have been bred in captivity, uh, but it's fairly rare. It is a difficult thing to do for a couple of different reasons, and one of the reasons is that the beetles themselves um, will, re will uh, lay eggs and they will produce uh, larvae, but their larvae have difficulty pupating in captivity, but the code has been cracked. I know of at least two different groups that have done it. Pardon me while I uh, remove the lid here. We'll be putting the beetles in in just a minute. So, um, Dean Ryder on Arachnoboards has done it multiple times. He has successfully um, induced pupation and uh, we've also got the Cincinnati Zoo recently had success with to my knowledge just one beetle uh, which is you know that's that's an accomplishment that's great so I have decided to try it um, I know how to do it um, in theory so now I'm going to put that to the test and see if I can actually get it to happen um, pretty cool so right now I'm taking a second to collect my beetles, and then I'm going to put them in here. So, just a moment, if you bear with me while I do that. I've got about three to four inches of uh, play sand down in the bottom, and then I've got some pieces of sagebrush, weathered sagebrush, uh, choya cactus, and uh, some rocks in there. I've let the, the sand dry out for several days because it was too wet. So, okay, now I've got some, some chatters in here. Carter's Critters. My friend is trying to breed them and has a few larvae. Awesome. Yeah, I've had larvae before, um, and they're, it's really cool to see them, but they generally die unless they get what they need, so that's part of the reason I'm doing this. Go in this direction with it. So, um, let's see what else we've got here. Nature Zone in the house, and Animal Lovers, one, two, three, in the house as well. Okay, I've got a couple of other beetles. Here's a desert clown beetle going in there. And this is my, I'm gonna show you this one. This is my um, black death feigning beetle. Sometimes they look black, sometimes they look kind of bluish. That's not focusing very well, is it? It's not, not in a, a good position to focus with the, the vivarium back there. But I'll put that one in there. This is a closely related species. This one is um, Asbolus labus, which means smooth. Oh, Lavis does. Oh, this one got too wet. Oh, I think it's because the... Oh, no! Oh, no, when I picked up the clown beetle, it sprayed all over these guys. A couple of them. Ah, uh, no, that's frustrating. Okay, well, here's one of my death fanning beetles. Fortunately, got sprayed by the clown beetle. I'm sure it'll be fine, but it's probably pretty irritated. This one got hit, too. Notice how it looks really kind of flat black. Uh, where it got wet, which is pretty unfortunate. At least you can see them doing their death fainting trick here. I'll put them right in the front so you can see that. And when they decide to wake up, um, you can see that too. Oh, that's just unfortunate. It's really frustrating. Oh, Carter's Critters has some of the smooth death fainting beetles. That's cool. I, I really like those two. Right now I only have one. I used to have another, but... Uh, Unfortunately, this winter passed away, and I'm not sure why. Um, so here we go. Let's put the other one right there. And now I need to try to wash my hands off. I got uh, repugnant torial fluid from that beetle. It just let loose right in my hand. I don't think that's even ever happened before. So perfect timing. Thank you. He has great timing, doesn't he? Wait until he's on camera before he does that. Um, wow, that was fun. Let me see if I can get my hands clean. I'm going to try to spray them off here. I've got paper towels and stuff in here, so just a second while I do that. Um, you can see the beetles still, most of them aren't doing a whole lot, are they? They're just kind of sitting there, um, feigning death, which is kind of cool. But here, let's see if we can move a little closer to them. Get a, should I? Try to zoom in a little bit on these beetles. Huh? Yeah, that's kind of cool. You can see them a little better. 
Let's see. Okay, so who's in here? Let's see. So we've got Dr. Spud and Zoom Boy, Animal Lovers, one, two, three. So Kalisa Springer, welcome everyone. And um, you can see one of the beetles just uh, righted itself. I can see another beetle twitching. Kind of the third one from the left is twitching a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. Sorry, the lighting is not as good as I would like it to be. Maybe I can adjust the lighting a little bit. I would see if I can do that. Um, okay, you got to tell me, is that any better or not? If, if the lighting is like this. So I'm, uh, trying to see if that helps. I think that might be a little better. Getting the, the focus of the camera is also tricky. Hmm. But the lighting is just a little bit better. Good. Glad to know that. Okay, I would I would love a like spike. We got a few likes. That's good. I'm I'm actually gonna take the uh, camera off the tripod now, so that I can move it around a little bit. That might help. Um, and get a close up on stuff. Here, I'll move the camera out of the way or the tripod out of the way, so you can get a close up on these beetles. Check that out. Look at that. I'm feigning death right there. This one is giving itself away, starting to twitch around a little bit. Look at that. You get to see the, the whole process in action. The feigning death and then the awakening. That one's still stuck still right there. And that one's not doing much, but at least it righted, it's righted itself. I feel really bad that they got sprayed by that other beetle. That'll teach me to try to move them all at the same time. But, okay, now we've got two beetles that have righted themselves. Nice. Let's see if this one's going to start moving around or not. I don't know. And Nature Zone said, uh, I collected a scorpion from the desert. Cool. What desert were you in when you did that? Oh, let's check out this guy. He's he's traveling. Check it out. The uh, I've noticed that the smooth death finny beetles seem to climb the wood a lot more than the smooth death finny beetles. They do they do do it. They they climb the smooth death finny beetles. I mean the rough death finny beetles climb on the wood, but the smooth ones do it more often. Okay, fifteen minutes away from Moab. Yeah, that's a good place. You can find a lot of cool stuff down there. They have some awesome collared lizards down there, too. And Miley Morky is here! Welcome! So, now, I must admit, my first purpose of this enclosure is breeding. So, aesthetically, I don't care as much. But what do you think? I like this piece of uh, sagebrush right here. Uh, I think the sagebrush kind of looks cool that way. I'm kind of thinking, though, maybe this piece... This sagebrush branch might be better if I put it in that way. The sand has taken days to dry and it's getting pretty dry now, but I don't know. What do you think? Is it better like that? I'm kind of thinking it is. Let's see what our beetles are doing. This one's moved around a little bit. And these are still playing dead. Wow. The sand is really crunchy and dry. I hope it's I hope it's dry enough because underneath you can see some condensation underneath. But about the top mm, three quarters of an inch to an inch is dry. I want to make sure there's not too much humidity in there because it's not great for them. Um, they need it pretty dry. Over here is where the larvae are going to be mostly. I'm going to put some water over here. Uh, more often this is where I'm going to be you know, trickling a little bit of water uh, and Un, you know under the rocks and so on I have put you can see there's leaves mixed in here I've got some cocoa fiber so organic compost and some leaves mixed in not too much but enough so that the larvae have something to eat over in this section and then over here this is just pure sand pure play sand that I got at the hardware store so that is uh, hopefully what's gonna get them going the basic thing that I need to do is, once I see larvae, because I have seen larvae before, is I've got some larvae, 
is I can start taking them out, raising them separately, and then once they get to near the two inch mark, I need to put them into an incubator in separate little containers, like separate deli cups, um, with some sand and some cocoa fiber, that kind of stuff, and keep them at like 75 to 80 percent relative humidity and about 88 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is supposed to be the secret. That's when they pupate. They need to be isolated and they need to be um, kept at that warm temperature. And that seems to do it. So thanks to everyone who has hit the like button. Yeah, the moisture gradient should help because the beetles don't really want it, but the larvae need it. That's why I've seen larvae in my beetle enclosure before, but they've never really made it because they don't have a moisture moisture gradient and there's probably not enough organic material in the, in the soil. So, Miley Morky says, I collected some two millimeter snails. Cool. Are they aquatic snails or are they terrestrial snails? Carter's Critter said, my smooth death fainting beetles feign death whenever I open up the lid. Hmm. Do they do the pop and lock thing? I love that when they do that. It's the coolest thing about them, I think. Um, let's see. It says, also I have a piece of wood in their enclosure and there's a big hole in the wood that they hide in. Yeah, mine do a lot of hiding in the little spots in the wood too. You know, I went down... Um, well, I'm going to tell you about that later, actually, in a different video, so I'm not going to get into that, uh, what I was about to say, so sorry. Don't want to make any spoilers. Oh, we got some more likes. Thank you, Zoom Boy. And Miley Morky says, land snails. Oh, cool. Are they, like, glass snails? Are they, uh, like, shaped like trumpet snails? Are they the ram's horn shape snails? I'm wondering what kind of species you got there. Um... <laughs> Remember to turn the screen upside down so you can press the like button again. Are the plants doing well? Pretty much, yeah. The plants are doing pretty well. Um, I still need to plant them out. I'm still figuring out um, where I'm going to put everything. But yeah, seem to be doing okay. I think I'm going to put at least some of the moss in my frog vivarium. But I've been quarantining it for a while. Oh yeah, I know it was a joke. I'm just, I'm just kidding. So Carter's critters, the, his. Black death finning beetles do the pop and lock, and it's interesting. I love that. I really do. And Fletcher Steinberg, yes, this is the new enclosure for breeding. This is where they're going. Um, so I'm pretty excited about it. Some eggs I have. I'm not going to say anything, but I have. That's all I'll say. <laughs> okay, so look, here comes one of the black ones. Well, the black one. I only have one now. Wasn't sure what happened to the one during the winter. But it started going downhill. It was okay. Thanks, Zoom Boy, for coming in. And Miley Morky says there's no data out there for them, but some have a white ram shell and others a tan spiral. So you got two different species. I think I've seen the tan spiral ones. I'm not sure if I've seen the white ram shells or not. I have seen some really tiny ones, so it could be the same. It might be something different. I don't know. But that's super cool either way. I have a tiny type of snail in one of my vivariums. I'm trying to get it going. Somebody sent them to me. One of the Aquarimaxers sent a uh, little culture of them to me, and I put them in with my one of my crested geckos, trying to see if I can get them to go to breed. Haven't seen them for a while, so hopefully they're doing something in there. This one's really active, isn't he? And... Jay's crazy obsession. Hey, hey, I think I'm late, but it must be Wednesday. Hope you feel better. I'm getting there. I'm doing better to some degree. Not as well as I'd like to be, but I am doing uh, a fair bit better. And Nature Zone. We'll see if we can get um, see if we can get there. Um, not sure. Well, this this kind of snail. I had hesitated to keep snails in my vivariums for a long time, but these. Um, he had kept them in his vivariums for a really long time. They stay really small. They don't get to pestiferous proportions, and they just tended to be a good member of the cleanup crew. So since he had done a lot of research on this particular type of snail and tested it out, I was willing to give it a try because I had been very hesitant to put snails in before that. That's the reason why. That's, that's the reason why I decided to do it. So yeah, I was a tiny bit late today. But uh, I wanted to...
try it anyway. Um, and go ahead and get the live stream going. And I wanted to get these beetles in here. It's kind of funny how how utterly dead they're pretending to be, except for the one that crawled over. You can see it if you look really carefully right in the center of the screen. You can see a little bit of it poking out from under that chunk of weathered sagebrush there. That's the only only one that's really gone very far. These others are just sort of hanging out. Um, well, that is a good question. How do you know when they actually die? Well, I guess you could uh, you could try moving them and see if they do anything. Sometimes they'll switch a little bit, like that one, if you try to move them. But generally, you just leave them there for a while and see what they do. And sometimes it'll be hours. They'll sit there for hours. Sometimes it'll just be a couple of minutes. You never know what you're going to get. But uh, generally, you just leave them alone and, and see what happens after a few hours, or even the next day. If you know, sometimes they will sit there for a long time. So, uh, there we go. And this is our most active beetle today. I think someday, if I can, if I have enough space, I would love to set up one just for um, blue death fanning beetles, and then another one for um, maybe some smooth death fanning beetles. I don't know, though. I go back and forth. Sometimes I just think it's cool to have them all mixed up, and that is cool. You can see this other beetle over here right in the center of the screen hiding under that piece of sagebrush. That's my desert clown beetle. I collected myself. These others I did not collect myself. Although you can collect them, at least this species, you can collect in my state. We'll see if I can do some of that at some point. Um, Dr. Spud says, found a massive salamander eggs a few weeks ago and they're going to hatch soon. They're small long boys. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, you, you know what kind of salamander they are? Salamander eggs would be fun to hatch. I've never done that. Collected salamander larvae before. There's only one species in my state. It's not a very salamander rich state. I mean, there's a lot of tiger salamanders here, but that's it. It's the only species that can be found here. So, let's see. And still have the velvet ants. Um, I do not. I wish I did. Um, they don't live all that long. So, um, this winter, they passed away. They live anywhere from zero to zero months to two years in captivity. And... Uh, Mine were about six months-ish, so that's not too bad. Um, hopefully we'll, uh, I want to collect a few more this summer. They usually show up around mid-July around here. So I'm going to go do some collecting, see if I can get some more. Um, if I have a chance to go down to the southern part of the state, I don't know if I can or not. But they have a white, uh, really fuzzy white velvet ant that lives down there. So that would be fun to collect some of those. My cousin is a, an entomologist who studies such things, so I might actually ask him if I don't get a chance to go down and he goes down on one of his collecting trips, maybe he can pick one or two up for me, because uh, he's always off doing that for his job. Oh, some eggs, thank you. Typo in the title of the stream. Um, I will try to adjust that as soon as I can. It'll probably be after the stream, of course, but I will try to get to that. That would be important. Red spotted newts, cool. Do I have any tiger salamanders? Um, I don't currently, although I have in the past. Yeah, I had one named Commodious Rump because he was a big pig and ate a lot. He was kind of fat. He was great. I loved that salamander. It was really funny. Very excited about food. And this one is kind of being active now. Um, so, you found yellow velvet ants? Where did you find those? I would love some yellow velvet ants too. I've, seen pictures of them, videos of them, but I've never caught one. I find the red ones and kind of the orange ones around here, and that's it. Um, and Jay's crazy obsession. Do you have any, do you do any fish outside? Have in the past. I'm not doing it right now, but I would love to get back into it. I really love doing, especially like summer tubbing kind of thing. I, I want to do that. Um, this is what I would do if I could, and I may be able to do this at some point. It's just um, have a tub that I set up in the spring, put a species of fish in that I haven't bred yet, let it breed in the pond, document the entire process all summer on video, 
you know, have like a monthly update or something for the pond. And then um, sell off the species when it starts to get, you know, starts maybe late September, early October. Sell everything off and put the pond away and then start again uh, next spring. I think that would be really cool because it just gets too cold out here to keep a pond without, you know, doing all sorts of fancy things to keep it warm. So uh, it can be done. I've seen it done. L.R. Bretz does it, but uh, without doing that. It looks they're finally starting to wake up, a couple of them anyway. Miley Morky says, how's your fairy shrimp? There isn't anything about them on this channel in years. That is true. It has been a while since I've done a lot with fairy shrimp. I'm contemplating hatching some out this summer. I've got some eggs, so I might hatch out some beaver tails again this summer. That would be fun. We'll see what I... I just haven't had a lot of time lately, so see how that goes. Oh, so Nature Zone, you found them in the same place where I found the scorpion. Oh, cool. Close to that same place. Did you find them already, like this year? When you were down there, you found them? Because if you found them this early, that's that's news to me. That's a cool thing, because I've only found velvet ants in the you know, summer or fall. Really? Wow. i got to go down there. You found them this year. You should have brought me some. I, I would have bought them from you. If you go back down there and you catch them, I will buy them from you, no problem. Totally do that. Oh no, that's awful. Smashing a velvet ant, that is, that's just terrible. Dr. Spud says, the pond I got the eggs from lasts all year and has no fish, so the newts complete their whole life cycle in there with no terrestrial stage. That is cool. I've, I've known of that particular process occurring with tiger salamanders that occurs up in our high mountain lakes here. Um, when there are no fish, that tends to happen, even perhaps in some lakes that do have fish. But uh, I didn't know that it could happen with red spotted newts. It's cool. And it is interesting how life cycles of amphibians change depending on their environment. I believe it's fire salamanders in Europe, depending on their altitude and climate of the area where they're at, they will either give live birth to fully formed terrestrial salamanders, or give live birth to aquatic larval salamanders, or, I think I'm right about this, or they lay eggs. Which is kind of crazy that they can do all three. Same species, different altitudes. No, that's okay if you didn't have a container. I, I don't blame you for not wanting to get stung, but uh, that is why my rule is when I'm around going anywhere, I've got deli cups. I mean, you know, anywhere in nature, pretty much, I've got deli cups with me. If there's any remote chance I'm going to catch something. I keep a couple of deli cups in the glove box in my car. So it doesn't matter where I'm going. I have them. I'm not saying you did anything wrong. Of course not. But I'm just saying it's a good habit to get into. Um, so, Miley, you know that uh, I'm not, I don't know all about the legality of this or anything. So I'm not saying one way or the other. But my understanding is that Arizona fairy shrimp can sh ship internationally. Um, that you may have to get permits and stuff like that. It's, but it'd be interesting to look into. So ArizonaFairyShrimp.com sells beaver tail fairy shrimp. And I know they do sell internationally. I just don't know about the laws in your country and whatnot. So you'd have to figure that out. But uh, it's um, something to think about anyway. And um, Nick Apple, ever consider keeping diving beetles? feel like they'd be right up your alley. Cool. Um, I think, I, I've never kept diving beetles, but I like them. I mean, I just think they're super cool. I, I think I might try that. I'd be, I'd be up for it. I think all kinds of beetles are cool, and the aquatic beetles, especially the, the big ones. You know, I've, I've caught beetles, uh, aquatic beetles of various sorts before. Um, last summer, or last spring, I guess, I ran into... Um, some whirligig beetles. Those are great. I hadn't seen those in years. I love whirligig beetles. They're the ones that kind of skim along the surface of the water. With They have specially modified eyes so they can see above water and below water and they just prey on bugs that fall into the water and stuff. They're super cool. Um, so I think I'd do diving beetles. So Nature Zone says I think I'm an eastern sand scorpion. Cool. So you, you kept it. That's cool. Miley Morky says um, that Arizona ferry shrimp can ship, but it's down recently. Oh, and you're in Canada. Okay. Um, so if it's been down for a while, I hope it comes back up. 
I bought, that's where I bought my uh, beaver chill. I bought a lot of things from them. Bought uh, clam shrimp and a couple of different species of fairy shrimp and daphnia and um, seed shrimp and I want to say probably some other things from that group, um, that site, and, and hatched them pretty successfully. Had some fun with that. It's been a few years since I've done a lot with the Renault pool organisms, but I have done quite a bit in the past. I just have a couple of videos up about it because at the time I wasn't making a lot of YouTube videos, really, but I uh, need to do more. So, um, I don't know if I can say your name. Jean-Christophe Lacaz? Hey, I just watched your ice pod guide. Quite interesting. Do you think ice pods could cohabitate with other species? Geosis arma crabs, for example, in a paludarium. Or would it be too humid for them? Depends on the species. I wouldn't try armadillidium species in there, or like any of the Spanish giant porcelio species, but there are species that would probably do pretty well in there. Um, I would try maybe porcelio labus in with the geosis arma crabs because they breed quickly enough and they're fairly quick movers. I think, you know, the geosisarma crabs are predacious and they might hunt some of them down. But if you put enough of them in there and got them breeding, I think you could make it work. The main issue is that in the paludarium, there's some species that will just toss themselves into water and drown. Porcelio scabber seems to be one of the ones that'll do that a lot. I'm not sure whether Porcelio labus will do it or not, but they can, they can take the humidity. Oh, here's my little desert clown beetle doing its thing over here. There it is. I did originally collect a pair. This was last year. About this time of year, too. I guess it was it was probably later later in May. Because it was around Memorial Day. But about a year ago, collected a pair of these. They were together. I think they may have even been um, mating. So, um, But I, they, the other one eventually passed away. I think the other one was the male. So sad. Um, Nature Zone says, where can you find tiger salamanders? Well, in a lot of places, they live in the foothills here. If you go up to the mountain lakes, the, the larvae are often in the mountain lakes and ponds up there. Um, but as, who was saying? Jay's Crazy Obsession saying, I found some near, here in Salt Lake City, Utah tiger salamanders. Just be sure you know your local laws. I, yeah, that is important. I can't remember the local laws for amphibians right now. But most of the reptiles you can't collect, at least not without permitting. So um, look at those three still playing dead. There's a couple over here hanging out under the wood. So they're, they're more active. That's good. So you definitely check the laws first. And okay. And oh good. I said Jean-Christophe's name just right. Excellent. Um. <laughs> the stream of the typos. Yeah, something like that. But it's also the stream of the beetles. And um, we are getting some activity and some very convincing death fanning going on right here. There's the uh, other beetles over here, the smooth death fanning beetle and the clown beetle. You can collect like two per year, like four max or something. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And Jay's crazy obsession says, rest my employees under me think you just say stuff to sound smart. Well, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I, I try to be careful not to say things I don't know anything about. If I uh, don't know anything about it, I try to make that very clear from the get-go. If you want to, you can ask me a question that you know I'll know nothing about, and I will demonstrate the truth of that. Um, Crystal's Pets and Plants. Hello, welcome. Uh, let's see what they're doing over here. That one must be hiding again. Is it down under here? Where'd it go? Lost sight of it. Darn it. Well, these guys are um, still not doing a whole lot, are they? I wonder what would happen. I'm going to move this one here. Not this one. I'll move this one because it's already upright. Let's see if I can get it walking or if it's just going to feign death more. Yeah, there it goes. And Julia, if you have any success with breeding, will you make a dedicated video? Definitely. I've already uh, got footage of putting this uh, vivarium together. So um, that's the plan. The whole plan is to document each stage and make a dedicated video about the breeding process. 
Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Miley Markey says, those beetles are one with the sand. Yeah. It's kind of a zen experience going on in there, isn't it? I kind of like that. I just totally doing that. So, yeah, thanks, Crystal. I love these guys. I wish someone were being more active like the smooth death fainting beetles here. Look how smooth he is. He's so smooth. Smooth mover. Heather Jensen. Welcome. Glad you're able to make it in time to catch the last few minutes of the live stream. And I am very excited about breeding the beetles. I hope it works. Like I've said before, I've seen larvae before in my setup, but it's not really conducive. My previous setup was not conducive to larva doing well. Um, so I would, uh, you know, I knew that I had to change things up. And this setup should, if all goes well, make it a lot better for them in terms of breeding environment. It was perfectly good for them to survive, but not for uh, breeding. So, yes. Um, I think I've seen them up there too, Jay. Jay's crazy obsession. Oh, Pokesaurus. Howdy and welcome. And these are as pets. Um, they don't breed terribly quickly. They're not like mealworms or superworms or anything like that. They probably wouldn't make a good food source because of that. They breed fairly slowly. Not only that, um, their larvae have very exacting requirements. You have to separate them to get them to pupate and they have to be incubated at a high temperature, around 88 degrees. So they would not work too well for a food source. But they make great pets, and these, these actually are in quite a lot of demand as pets these days, and they can be sold. I've seen them for, the going rate is often around $20 these days, between $10 and $20. Um, so that is um, kind of the word on that. Um, Julia says, my blues are not always active as the rest. They very much are active at night. Yeah, mine tend to be most active, I notice, around twilight. Once the lights go out, they're going crazy. And engine at 90, hopefully you can get some someday. And Heather Jensen, they're on my growing list of animals I want. I love the blue, all the inverts doing well over here. Excellent, glad to hear it. Yeah, I, I love them too, and I hope that I can get them breeding and get some of the captive bred ones in the hobby. Yeah, and Julia, you're right, the captive bred would, would need to go for more because they're not going to be very profitable at all. Um, probably not profitable. People are probably going to be losing money on putting it in the hobby to some extent, but at the same time, um, I think it's worth it just for the love of the creatures and to get more people breeding them so we're not... You know, they're very common in their natural habitat, but I think it's good to get them breeding in captivity anyway just for, you know, sustainability's sake and so on. Not that maybe, you know, sustainable collecting couldn't continue, but I think some captive breeding would be beneficial. Crystal Pets and Plants wants to get a leaf bug. They look cool. Totally do. Pokesaurus, how are your pets doing? Most of them are doing pretty well. I'm, I'm really happy with uh, this this new project, getting this going. And yeah, in general, they're doing well. Um, right. Check out... Jay's Crazy Obsession says, check out Nature in Midvale. Is it a pet store? Um... I would like to check it. I um, is is it's just spelled N A T U R. Hmm. I have to look at that. <laughs> Julia says to be fair, many people only want captive bred animals, so charging a premium is normal. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, people expect to, to pay more for captive bred typically. That's true. Oh look, that one's being active. Finally, get some blue death feigning action going on. Now it's gonna go hide. Well, you know what? Um, I'm just about to wrap up here, so if you have any final questions for me, um, then, okay, I will. I'll check that out, Jay's Crazy Obsessions. I'm curious. I want to hear more about this. So, um, and yes, I am in Utah, and I am hoping to go to the expo. I'm trying to work that out. I was talking to my wife about it today, see if we can work that out. I have often thought of getting a table. I haven't done it yet, um, but let's see.
Oh, that one's doing pretty well there. Just walking around. I really wish it hadn't gotten sprayed by the clown beetle. That's just upsetting. But I'm hoping to go to the expo, so maybe you'll see me there. I will wear one of my Equimax shirts, and you'll be able to track me down, hopefully, if you're there. So, and uh, you can check it out. So, Aquahogs Fish Tank Seller Online, you mean Nature, N-A-T-U-R, that one? Um, let's see. Oh, I'm going to have to check this out. I've never even heard of this place. But now I really want to. I really want to check it out. So I better go do it really soon. Well, now we've got some beetles crawling around. It's about time to end the stream, everybody. So thank you for joining in. Thank you for the like spike request, everybody. We've got 22 likes. Not bad at all. Hey, Mike Titula is in the house. Great to see you here. I'm just setting up a new tank for my death fanning beetles, as you can all see. Um, oh, what I meant, um, Nature Zone, is that uh, I'm going to wear my Aquamax shirt so you can find me when you're there. But uh, I hope to see those of you who are local at the expo. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining in. And I have got a cutout. I'm going to have some more videos to work on this uh, evening and other things, too. So... I'll try to keep you updated on my blue death fanning beetles and the breeding project. So uh, 